Welcome to my series on Tower Basics. In this first video, I'll give a brief introduction to Science Olympiad Tower Building and outline what I'll cover throughout the entire five-part series. The rules of tower building change every cycle, and at the time of this recording, the rules for the 2023-24 season haven't been released yet, but what I'm going to present should be very useful regardless of the rules. Building towers is fun. Many kids start building towers when they are very young using colorful blocks. By elementary school, the materials change and there are fun activities using spaghetti and marshmallows and common drinking straws. There is even an event called Mystery Architecture in the elementary version of Science Olympiad that uses random material to try and build the highest tower to hold something like a tennis ball. By the time we reach Division B and C Science Olympiad, or middle and high school, the tower event brings much more precision and engineering to the process, and to compete at the highest level, it helps to understand a bit more of the why things are done the way they are, rather than just using trial and error. If you are unfamiliar with the BALSA structural event in Science Olympiad, the very basic rules generally never change. It involves a 5 by 5 centimeter loading block, from which you hang a bucket which gets filled with sand over time. There is a maximum load capacity of 15 kilograms, and the scoring involves some form of maximizing efficiency. For example, if you made a 10 gram device that held 12 kilograms, your efficiency would be 12,000 divided by 10, or 1,200. If you made a 6 gram device that held 9 kilograms, it would have an efficiency of 9,000 divided by 6, or 1,500, and that would beat the other device even though it held less. Sometimes there are special scoring rules for things like holding the entire 15 kilograms, or for achieving certain design specifications. But a fundamental part of this competition is always about building the most efficient device. Every two years, the type of device that gets built changes, usually cycling between boomer levers, like shown here, bridges, and then towers. In this series of videos, I'm going to explain some of the engineering theory behind tower building and take a very close look at six different mini tower builds to see if we can see this theory in action. To compare these builds, I've gone to considerable effort to make sure the legs and cross-member material was as identical as possible, and to use a perfect 3D printed jig to try and isolate only the design differences. Here are the masses of each tower shown above. Can you guess which one will have the best efficiency? Can you guess which one will be the worst? How much better do you think the best one is compared to the worst? Take a minute to think about that, and then compare your guess to the actual results by the end of the series to see how close you were. Feel free to put your guesses in the comments below. The next video will be entirely focused on the basic theory and demonstration of buckling, which is critically important to understanding tower design. Thanks for watching, and please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions.